Hi, I'm Ryan Gorley. I'm the managing partner at Digit. We're a creative agency in Salt Lake City, and I'm showing you a website for Alex Meisner Construction that we built in collaboration with the good people at Meriwether Studios. Now, the intent of this video is to show you a couple of the neat things on the front of the site, but primarily to show you how easy it is to add and edit content on the back of the site. So let's get started. Here you have the index page for the site. You might call it the home page. Up at the top, we have navigation. We have some statements here, a big hero image, something to give somebody a big impression when they first show up. As I scroll down, you'll see some animations as different aspects of the information people need to know up here. We have a couple portfolio projects. We have some testimonials. And we have, of course, the way that they can get in touch with you. You'll see this call to action area on every page of the site because that's really what the site is for, is to turn new people that visit your site into customers. Now we're going to show you in a little bit how you can add and edit all of this content on this page. I'm going to go first to Homes. Homes is shorthand for available homes or homes for sale. Right now I have one home listed. Again, we, I still have this persistent call to action. Let's look at this home a little bit and see what we have here. So you'll see this full edge to edge banner. It does automatically animate. Um, somebody could bounce around to see different images by clicking these thumbnails, by using these arrows, or by dragging the entire pane. Down further, I have a title. Here I can add a subtitle if I like, a paragraph, some bullet points, a hyperlink, and so on. We'll show you all about how you can add and edit these later. On the right I have some details like the number of beds and baths, the size, the cost, and the address. You'll notice on the page that we were at last that when I hover over the icon it shows that same title and that same address. Let's look at Portfolio. All right, same layout, same information, name, address, name, address, same call to action. One thing I want to show you on this page that's kind of important is that this page is responsive. Now what responsive means is that the layout adapts to the display that is being viewed in. And that's really important because there are people using your website on monitors that are of different sizes, they're using it on tablets, they're visiting it on mobile phones and mobile phones all have different sizes. So how do you deal with all of that variability um, but and still have a good looking site for everyone? And that's what when we use a responsive layout. And so to illustrate that, what I'm going to do, it's pretty easy, is I'm going to change the size of my browser window and you can kind of watch here. So going up to the top right here, and I just scaled this down and whoa, what just happened? Okay. These are now on top of each other. If I go to the top, I have a drop down menu. Now this is where this is this is where it gets interesting. So as I drag it bigger, oh my full width width menu came back, and now these are too wide. And now they're three wide. So you can see that the web website is behaving intelligently to the, s the window it's being viewed in. And this is a way to make sure that your site is accessible to everybody. Once I click into one of these portfolio projects, you'll see a similar set of information. This middle icon or logo will take us back to the home page. And I'll just show you that that does work. Services is a nice, a little bit more graphical page that allows you to describe basically the primary services that you have through three paragraphs of good text. These icons here will push you down to the section that they represent. And this is re responsive like the other sites on the or the other pages on the site. All right. 
contact. We have a map here up in the head header. Excuse me, the banner. We have a little call to action, a little reason to say, hey, give me a call. And then a little bit more expanded set of information with your phone number, your email, links to your Facebook and Instagram, and a form here that somebody can fill out. Okay, before we get started on showing you how to add and edit content, um, a couple of things to talk about. Um, there are two types of images on the site. We have banner images, and those appear here and up in the top. And then we have these testimonial um, portraits. We want your website to be as fast as possible for everyone that shows up. And one way that people can make that not happen is by uploading images that are too large. So what I recommend doing is getting your photographer to send you images that are already scaled down for the web. Not that she can't or he can't send you images that are larger, but have a set of images that are scaled down. And the dimensions I recommend are to have banner images that are no larger than 1920 wide and to have these portraits or um, scaled no larger than 480 by 480 pixels. These need to be square. These banner images can be whatever they need to be. But one additional step, in addition to making sure that your images aren't too wide, or in other words, um, too large for people to download, um, is to go to the site called Kraken. It's kraken.io. After you have those images resized, go to the web interface. Here you can try it for free. And I can just, I don't need to change any of the settings. I just choose, pick an image. And it will do its thing. I see here that the image was originally 356 kilobytes. When it was done, it was 280. And that saved me 20% on my file size. Now bear in mind, that's basically increasing the speed of your website by 20%. So it's a good idea to do on all the images you upload on the site. Now, the website is built on what we call a CMS, or a content management system. You probably have heard of them. Um, one popular one is WordPress, there's Joomla, there's Drupal, there are a lot of them. Um, the CMS that we used for this site is called Kirby. Kirby is developed in Germany, it's used around the world, um, but it's a fantastic content management system, largely because it's fast, it's easy for us to work with, which makes it easier for you to add and edit content. And ultimately, it makes it less expensive for sites like this that need just basic ability to add and edit their own content. So in order to get to Kirby, the back end, um, which we'll call the panel, you're just going to type in on the URL forward slash panel. And here we have a blank login page. And here we are. This is your dashboard for your panel. On the left, you have your images, or excuse me, your pages. Um, the middle, you have the URL for the site, and you'll see that this is the temporary URL. Um, you have an area where you can change your password by going to edit. And here we have some pages that we've been editing recently. Up in the top left is where I will log out when I'm done. I can see other users and I can manage some basic site options that we're not going to necessarily get into. Okay, as I walk you through this, we're going to walk you through the order of the site as it is on the front. So I'm gonna open this up, I'm gonna go back to the site. So we have Homes, Portfolio, Index, Services, Contact. So the first page anyone's going to land on is your index page, so let's take a look. On the left are some basic page settings. Um, probably the most important one you'll need to be aware of is that 
Um, this is kind of your bucket of files that you can reference inside of the page. Um, you'll need to upload images before you can put them on the page, and this is where you'll do it. And I'll show you in just a moment how you can. Here's our page title. Now, don't change the title on any of these core pages. We chose the titles because of kind of an unconventional navigation up here on the top. Um, if we make one of these really long, it's going to look imbalanced. So keep those titles what they are. Uh, the banner, I can change this to be something different. Here I'll illustrate. Let's just change that and go down and save. This is the previous image. Let's refresh it. And there's the new one. And you'll notice that the options I have in this dropdown are those files that are on the left here in this bucket. So let's just change that back and save that. These should be self-explanatory um, as, as far as the text. Um, here are my reviews. Now I've got a review from Chuck Norris, Bruce Willis, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, let's say I just got a job and I did some work for Jean-Claude Van Damme. So I'm going to add him in. Now I've already uploaded Jean-Claude's picture. I'll show you later in the tutorial here how to um, do that yourself. I'm going to select his image. There you go, a raving review from Jean-Claude Van Damme. So I've added that in. I get a little prompt here saying, hey, remember to save it. Let's just do that for good measure. I go down and here's Jean-Claude Van Damme. Now, maybe I'm particularly um, in love with his review and I want that to appear, appear first on the website. All I've got to do is grab it there you go and drop it right at the top there again save it let's go to the front of the site and take a look I'll refresh it here you'll see that it reflects that switch back to that new banner oh we missed them refresh one more time there we go you can see that he's the first in the queue and then Chuck Norris comes up which is the order that it is back here. So that's how you edit your index page. Up in the top left to find my way around the site, I have a breadcrumb trail that kind of tells me where I'm at. So we'll go back to this dashboard and we're going to look at homes. Okay, same story here. Um, you'll see that I only have one option for my banner and that's because I only have one image in this bucket these fields I can fill in, the title that we shouldn't probably shouldn't mess with. And then down here are the homes that are visible on that pa this page. And we only have one. So let's go visit that page. And you'll see that this reflects the information that's on the back. So let's go in and edit this one. To edit a house, you click on it. And this looks similar to what you've seen elsewhere. I've got a different bucket of images. The title here, a section of text, some details, thumbnail, and a gallery. When you're editing, the only, there are only a couple of things that you probably need to be aware of. Um, there are these little symbols here, these hash symbols, these asterisks. These are what we call markdown. Markdown is just a way to add some styling to text um, without having to know HTML. So it's really simple. You can create a bullet list with asterisks. You create titles or headings with uh, hash symbols. You don't really need to remember that. All you need to remember is that I can just type in some title 
select it and go up here where I have icons that will basically do it for me. So here I added a heading. Now the only time that you might need to kind of understand what these are, let's just save it and see how this looks. And we'll come back to that. Some title is when you're uh, removing things. If I didn't want this to be a bullet list, I'm just going to remove those asterisks, save it. And there you go, that's not a bullet list anymore. You'll see the way the hyperlinks are formatted um, in, within these parentheses. I have a link colon and then I have a hyperlink and a text colon and that's the text for the hyperlink which is this guy right here. So let's just delete this out and let's say we want to add link to Google. Maybe we want to link to it on Google Maps or something. So you can come up with a better use for it but here's my demo. So I'm going to select the text that I want to be the link going to hit that little chain here, that link uh, symbol, and I'm going down here. Now I'm not done. You'll notice that I've got the text filled in, but my link is just http colon slash slash. I need to fill that in with the URL that I want that to go to. So we'll go back to the front of the site. We'll refresh it. Link to Google. Google is hyperlink and that will take you to google.com. Now, just bear in mind if that takes you somewhere that says this page doesn't exist, it probably means that this address here was typed in a little bit incorrectly. I don't know if you'll use the links often, but this is just a way to know how to use them. I'm going to make those into a bullet list again, save this, and there we go. So let's say I want to change the order of the images. Um, this particular house may be, maybe one of these other images are just better than, than the ones that I see on the front of the site. There's an easy way to do that. Um, the way I am going to change the order is I'm going to go to my bucket. I'm going to go edit. And I'm just going to drag them into a new order. So now maybe, maybe for some reason this kitchen is more valuable to put as that first image. I'm going to hit back. I'm going to save. And now you'll see here that the, currently it is the house. And when I refresh, now it's the kitchen. Let's say there's more information that I want the images to contain than just what than just an image. Maybe there's something about this kitchen that's particularly important. There's a way I can make that a caption for that image. So let's go back to that area we were at where we were editing our bucket of images. And I'm going to go here. Instead of moving this, I'm going to hit edit. And on the right here I have a ca caption saying these are real wood cabinets and hard floors. Okay. I'm going to save that. And I'm going to go back here again is that breadcrumb trail. I'm going to go back to that house. Just for good measure I'd save it again. You don't have to. But sometimes on the side you have to save, sometimes you don't. I just like to save every time. Okay, I refresh this page, and now when I look at it in full, a uh, full light box, I get this little caption, these are real wood cabinets and hard floors. So that's a way just to nest more information inside of your pages um, to get people closer to the experience they'd have if you were to walk them through. Okay, let's go back now and look at the portfolio. I'm going to go to the dashboard.
Okay, same story here. Now this one I have two projects. The Miller home and the Dinsley home. And we'll just go to the portfolio section. And there they are. Miller home, Dinsley home. Now let's say because I have two in here and I only had one in the houses for sale. I want to change the order of these guys. How do I do that? I'm just going to go to edit. So you'll remember with the images to change the order we went to edit in this bucket. Here we'll go to edit in this area. I'm going to put that Dinsley home first. Go back. Save. And just watch as they change order. There we are. Maybe there's a newer house that you want to appear first or one that's more impressive. That's an easy way to change the order of things. I'm going to click into the Dinsley home. And you'll see the same story, same type of content. Um, I can ch Maybe I want to change the image that shows as a thumbnail. Let's just choose this guy, Meisner 12. So if I refresh this page, all right, now it's showing that nice living space. Okay, maybe um, I don't want to show all the images. Some of the images are better than others. I'm just going to deselect those. Hit save. And we're going to need to click into here to see that, that change. But now there are only three. Let's add them all back in. And let's change the order. I want this... Um, yeah, let's save it first. Look at it. Okay, let's say this backyard picture over here. I want that appear, to appear second. Remember, if I change the order of the images in the gallery, I go over here, I hit edit, and I drag that. Hit back. Save. And now, that is the second image. And that's it. Okay. Now, let's let's look at portfolio. I'm going to go back to this page. Let's say we need to add a new one. I need to add a house for the Davis family that we just finished. So how am I going to do that? Over here next to edit is an add button. I'll click, I'll click add. I'm going to give it a title. I'm going to say it's the Davis house. Okay. I'm going to, just to make this easy, paste in some blank text, put in an address, down to the thumbnail in the gallery and wait. There's nothing here. That's because I don't have anything in my bucket. So let's add some images. Here's some images that I've already resized and I went and made sure that they were um, compressed even more using Kraken. So they're as small as possible. And let's just say, because I can only put eight on this page, let's just say I want to pick these six. I'm going to hit save. Now you'll notice one thing on the, the site. Sometimes when you're loading more than one image, um, it doesn't refresh that icon immediately. But don't worry, they're there. So it says, oh, you have unsafe changes. What's going on? Up in the top right, I have this, this warning. It says, please fill in all fields correctly. And then it has a that it's red, and then I have this gallery type um, label red here. So what's going on? Well, what, what's happening is that I I've uploaded the images, which means they appear here as options, but I have to select them. So go in and select all of these. 
And don't forget, we want a thumbnail too. So let's save that. Get a little smiley face saying, yeah, you did it all right. Okay, now let's go back out to the front of the site. I'm gonna go to our portfolio section. And go, oh wait, wait a minute. The Davis home isn't here. What's going on? Okay, this is something that is handy, but something you'll have to remember. When you create a new page, by default, it's invisible. Now the reason for that is you may not be finished with it. You don't want it to appear on the site until you're ready. Let's say you don't have the images yet, or you haven't written a description. So where those pages end up is kind of in a, a holding area. Now to get that to appear visibly on the site, I'm going to go back to this portfolio page. I look down here, I have one, two, then double dash. Double dash means it's invisible. I'm going to edit like I did earlier when I was moving things around. But you'll notice in here now on the right side, on the left where I have, it says visible pages, on the right I have invisible pages, and here the Davis house is. So let's just drag it over here to visible pages, go back, save, go here, and now when I refresh, there it is, the Davis home. Now let's say we want to add a caption. Let's go back into the panel. I'm going to navigate to the Davis house. See, I named it house instead of home. I'm going to edit my bucket of images. And within here, I'm going to hit edit. Okay, these are stairs. They go down. Save. Now, if maybe I want to add a caption before I leave here to a couple of the other images. There are a couple ways I can do it. I can go back to Files. I can go in and hit Edit and say, this is Room. Now instead of going back to files, one nice little shortcut here is I have a left and right arrow. I can just use that to go through all of the images in the bucket and say real marble. How do you spell marble? There we go. Marble counter tops. And so on, right? So when I'm done, I'm going to go back to this Davis house. Let's just save it for good measure. Let's refresh this page. Now when I go over here and see, look at the full image, I say these are stairs. They go down. This is a room. These are really good captions. If you want to leave them, I'm OK with it. OK. So I've added this new item. I've added captions, I've added the description. Now maybe I want to add a bullet list that says, you know, luxury bathrooms, spacious backyard as a couple bullet points. Let's just select those and make those into a bullet list. I'm going to save, refresh. And there they are. So you just added your first item. Now as far as adding homes, it's the exact same process. And I'll do this a little bit more quickly.
And there you have it. We've added another house. Except I just navigated to the one we already had. Here's the one we just added. <laughs> All right, there we go. This is your new house for sale. A couple things to make mention of while we're looking at it. The houses are designed to have eight images in the gallery. And you probably ask, well, why eight? Why not as many as I can possibly put on here? The reason we picked eight was it's to strike a balance between having enough information to get somebody to call you versus having a page that has a lot of images that are going to slow down how long it takes for somebody to load the page. Now, you and I have good internet connections, but one of your customers might not. And when they show up and the page takes forever to load, they may just leave. So we have to kind of find that balance between the, these two ends of the spectrum, which is kind of why we ended up with eight images. Okay, the rest of the site is relatively easy to edit. Services, you'll remember it looks like this. I'm going to go back to my dashboard here. I'm going to services, and here we are. I can change that banner image. I can edit these services. It's only designed to hold three, so this is an area just for editing. But if you want to say something different, it's pretty easy. Just hit that edit button, go in and add whatever text you want. Contact. Same story. Go back to the dashboard. Contact. I have my text fields. I have my links to my Facebook and Instagram, email and phone. You won't see your address here. If you want this address changed, that's something we can do on the back end. Okay, and lastly, a page that you're probably not thinking about is what happens when somebody goes to a page that doesn't exist. Our error page. Well, let's try it out. Oh, that page doesn't exist. Here's an error to let somebody know that your site does exist, but they're just going somewhere that's not. Now this does bring me to a point about um, what we were talking about earlier as far as slugs. Now a slug is this little piece at the end of a URL that determines where that page is on your domain. If you go back, let's go back to my dashboard, and let's say, let's go to homes. Now, I've got a better one. Let's go to portfolio. And let's go to down here to Davis House. Okay, so we have a pattern here. I've got Dinsley Home, Miller Home, Davis House. Oops, what was I thinking there? Okay, I'm going to show you why this is important um, and why it's probably important to get these slugs right early. So I'm going to, just to illustrate, I'm going to go here to Homes. I keep doing this. I'm going to go to Portfolio. I'm going to go to the Davis House. So it's portfolio slash Davis House. Now, I don't like that. I want to say Davis, Davis Home. Okay. Well, Davis Home is the title, but the URL still says Davis House. So maybe I want to change that. I go down here and go Davis Home. Change. I hit Save. Now let's say I didn't do this right away and I had shared a link on Facebook or sent a link in an email to that portfolio forward slash Davis House, which is this page. When they go to that page, oh, error. There doesn't seem to be anything at this location. Please check the URL. So that, that's just to illustrate the point that be careful about when you change these uh, URLs. Make sure you change them early before you share them with anyone um, and before Google finds it and maybe links to that page. Okay, I'm going to go back to Portfolio. Let's go back to Home Serve Sale. Here's one last scenario that I think we should illustrate. Okay, let's say you sell a house and you don't want it on your site listed as a house for sale anymore. Well, what do you do? There are a couple things you can do. I can either go to Edit and I can delete that house or Maybe I just want to drag it to invisible. It 
and now it's gone. So I'm all done. We have edited pages. We have added um, a testimonial. We have added a home for sale. We've added a portfolio and we've hidden a home for sale. So hopefully that covers pretty much everything that you'll need to do on the site. Um, so I'm all done. I go up to the top left here and I log out. And there you go. Congratulations. You've made it all the way to the end of this long tutorial. I'm excited to see what you do and I look forward to hearing from you if you have any questions.